Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The Rising People's Party has once again lashed out at the state government, accusing them of having various consultative meetings only to access funds in order to run for the next state elections. The Arunachal government has informed that a high power committee has been constituted and bilateral talks to be held with Assam Chief Minister to resolve the border row with Assam. Detention centres in Assam, which house persons declared as foreigners or illegal immigrants, has been renamed as transit camps by the Assam government. A special investigation team for corruption of the NSC and IM in a routine check around Dimapur town found that a hardware store has been selling products with tampered MRP. Owner has been asked to leave Nagaland. Now for the news in details. As the only opposition party left in Nagaland up against the new Nagaland United government, a new state in charge of the Congress party has been inducted. Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi on Wednesday, August 18, appointed former Lok Sabha MP and IPS officer Dr. Ajoy Kumar as in charge of Nagaland, Sikkim and Tripura. In an exclusive telephonic interview with Hornbill TV, Dr. Ajoy Kumar stressed the importance of reaching out to the youth and young people of the state. What would be your priorities for the three states and especially in regard to Nagaland? Build the park, make it strong because right now I, fundamentally in Nagaland there is the only opposition is Congress and it's and uh, within the assembly there is no voice which you know which can be raised in favor of what's happening whether it is uh, in terms of the challenges Nagaland is facing uh, with the BJP trying to make you know uh, the Hindi Hindutva agenda of the Bharatiya Janata Party I think we must make sure that the traditional social customs you know freedom of religion uh, the customs the traditions of the the various ethnic uh, tribe, uh, various tribes, northeast, should be protected. Constitutional guarantees should be ensured. Those are things which are very important. I think those are larger questions we need. And also to make sure that we uh, do our best to try to come back in, uh, in the, uh, to make a government in Nagaland so that we can do something for the benefit of the people. Also spare the people from multiplicity of different kinds of, you know, uh, taxes which are legal and different kinds of pressure people are being having to cough out. So I think it's important that we have one state, one tax and everything else. So this has obviously, you know, everybody's uh, vision and goal would be this, but uh, would, what would you say is the biggest difficulty in you know, what is the challenge for all of this now, considering that it has been... We, you know, need, to, we, need, to, we need to reach out to people and get them back. I mean, those who have left us, maybe if they have the right ideology to get them back, right thinking. But, uh, push young people to take leadership positions and make a change. Try our best, I mean, at least in terms of uh, actively work on the ground, raising issues which are important for the people. You know, with the with the kind of nonsense which is happening in uh, because of Mr. Hemant Biswa, Sarma, and uh, Northeast is is in really in turmoil. Yes. I mean, states are fighting each other as if it's, uh, you know, two nations at war. So I think the Congress should revive uh, all the Northeast state coordination, uh, make sure, because uh, what's happening right now in the Northeast is dismal. And, uh, you know, states protecting, uh, the states fighting each other. It's in a very explosive situation. And we need to ensure that, you know, we have people in the Northeast who have been living with centuries and thousands of years who live in peace. This is not political, the BJP's agenda of, you know, dividing. We need to fight we need to make the party strong on the ground and the rest is you know i've not visited it yet so unless i come there and sit and talk to everybody and mm -hmm. our priority is to give young people chance women chance mm -hmm. young girls and boys should come to congress because we would love to have young people mm -hmm. join politics and fight elections make a mark for themselves on Thursday, while also speaking to this channel, the president of the Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee, K. Thire, expressed hope that Dr. Ajoy Kumar will give support to the state, especially in terms of representing the state party at the center. Under the new leadership, Thire said that the first issue which needs to be tackled is to salvage the freedom of religion. 
The Hill Areas Committee has formally introduced the Manipur Autonomous District Council Bill 2021 in a press conference held at the Dynasty Hall, Classic Ground, on Thursday in the presence of many MLAs and officials. Let's have a look at the details. Speaking to media persons, HAC Chairman K. Leishio recounted that Manipur attained statehood in 1972 and Article 371C was inserted for the Hill Districts to form a district council. However, even after attaining statehood, the old district council is being implemented. He said that HAC members representing the Hill areas unanimously drafted a bill and handed it over to the government for the bill to be tabled in the upcoming assembly session on August 20 and pass it as an act. Supplementing the statements made by Leishio, Tien Haukep said that the draft proposal bill would contemplate the present act in implementation as it has caused inconvenience to the development of the hill areas and would produce an effective way in terms of development. He said that the committee, after thorough discussion, has drafted the bill and the bill, if passed in the August session of the House, would prove beneficial for the hill areas. Elaborating on the role taken up by the HAC, Alfred Kangam Arthur reiterated that the bill had been unanimously passed by HAC after thorough discussion for almost four and a half years and the newly drafted bill contained certain special provisions for the development of the hills. According to the rule book of the Assembly, HAC has been constituted with the sole purpose of ensuring accelerated development of the hill areas to promote unity between the people of the hill areas and other areas of the state by aiming at an integrated and even growth of the residents and would augment the resources of the state as a whole. Arthur said that the HIC has made it very clear to ensure development of the hill areas at the same time ensuring the unity of the state. He asserted that unifying the state cannot be an emotional integration and there has to be a fundamental and sustainable law consisting of growth which is possible only when there is firm law. The very reason why Article 371C was inserted was to empower the state to help its domiciles and residents to grow hand in hand. He said that HAC has come together to bring a draft bill for the state to legislate and enact which would bring the people closer and grow together to bear the fruit of democracy together. He said that the draft bill would ensure the future generation of the state and that they would appreciate the changes that could be brought by good legislation to bring equitable development of the residents of the state. The Rising People's Party has once again lashed out at the state government, accusing them of having various consultative meetings only to access funds in order to run for the next state elections. The RPP has asserted that the August 18 consultative meeting was never about women reservation. It was all about funds, the RPP claimed. The one and only agenda on the August 18 meeting was the government's insatiable desire to access the ULB funds amounting to several hundred crores by holding ULB elections at the earliest, possibly by January or February of 2022, funds which is being currently held by the central government since 2008. This fact cannot be denied because no women representatives were invited to the consultative meeting, the youngest political party stated. The RPP stated that the ruling politicians want to create a war chest of funds for the 2023 state assembly elections by accessing the ULB funds. Therefore, the August 18 exercise was a fraud committed by the state government disguised as discussion on women reservation and others for which the NUG should immediately rectify the deliberate mistake and apologize to the women folk of Nagaland and the 14 tribes, the press release from the RPP stated. Stating that the Nagaland United Government should be dubbed as a Nagaland Consultative Government, the party said that there has been no dearth of formation of committees and holding of endless numbers of consultative meetings since the PDA NUG came to power. Citing several examples of consultative meetings the ruling government has had since 2019, the RPP stated that the formation of the various committees and the consultative meetings are all delayed tactics which continue to fool everyone. While none of the burning issues have been resolved, the state exchequer seems to be depleting at a fast pace, the party stated. The special investigation for corruption of the NSC and IM in a routine check around Dimapur town found that a hardware store, namely Maharishi Hardware in the city tower area of the commercial hub, 
was selling old stock of bathroom fixtures and hardware items as new stock to its customers by changing the old MRP price tag. According to a member of the team, the old stock costs much lesser than new ones and were selling at an overpriced rate after changing the tag. The NSCNIM informed that the owner has been asked to dispose of the items and clear the store after which he has been asked to leave the state for good in a month's time. The National Investigation Agency has launched, launched an investigation into the delivery of a sophisticated tiffin bomb along with hand grenades and 100 pistol cartridges using a drone by Pakistan-backed Khalistani terrorists earlier this month. According to reports, the consignment was dropped on August 9 near a drain at Dalike village in Lopok subdivision of Amritsar district, Punjab, just ahead of the Independence Day, following which the state was put on high alert. It was named the Tiffin Bomb because 2-3 to three kg of RDX was packed in a children's lunchbox and was sophisticated enough for Punjab Director General of Police, Dinkar Gupta, to term it as straight off an assembly line. There may be more of such different boxes which would be coming or might have come and we don't know yet, he said. The lunch box, five hand grenades and ammunition for a 9mm pistol were packed in a bag and dropped off by a drone. Officials and security agencies investigating drone activity from across the border said that all anti-India groups, be it Islamic terrorists such as lashkar e taiba jaish e muhammad or Hezbollah Mujahideen, Khalistani Terrorists and drug smugglers are increasingly using drones to deliver arms, explosives and drugs to avoid capture. The Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh, Pema Khandu, has said that the state government is working to resolve the interstate boundary issue with Assam. Khandu informed at a function on August 19 that he has spoken to his Assam counterpart, Himanta Biswa Sarma, and agreed to resolve all issues through bilateral talks. Khandu further informed that the state government had constituted, constituted a high-power committee under the chairmanship of Home Minister Bamang Felix, which has already conducted several rounds of consultative meetings with stakeholders on the matter. The chief minister added that the committee will hold a meeting with all MLAs and deputy commissioners of the districts sharing boundary with Assam on August 26. The chief minister sa said that the groundwork under process is based on the recommendations made by the one-man local boundary commission constituted by the Supreme Court. It may be mentioned that Arunachal Pradesh shares approximately 730 km boundary with Assam. The Kashmir police on Friday informed that two militants were killed in an encounter in South Kashmir's Pulwama district, adding that the militants were part of a Hezbul Mujahideen hit squad. During a joint cordon and search operation launched by police, Army and the Central Reserve Police Force at Crew Pampore on Friday morning, militants opened fire, which the forces returned. While a police spokesman has identified one of the militants who was involved in the killing of a school peon of Lurgam last month, the identity of the second militant is yet to be ascertained. Police said an AK rifle and pistol was recovered from the encounter site. Swedesunyo Zao Kire, the head teacher of government middle school GMS Jakama under the district of Kohima, has been recently selected for the national award to Teachers 2021, which was announced by the Ministry of School Education and Literacy. She is the only teacher from Nagaland among 44 teachers across the country to be laureled with such a prestigious honor. In an exclusive interview with Hornbill TV, Kire said with recognition, she has a new responsibility and obligation to work with more dedication and sincerity towards the poor and the downtrodden students now. Let's have a look at what she has to say with our correspondent Max. I've joined the school in the year 1997 and I was proposed to be the head teacher in the year 2012 when this school was upgraded to government middle school. I was proposed to be the head teacher by the village council, even though they were senior teachers to me. So I started working as a head teacher since 2012, still date. I was working as a head teacher in this school. I've joined the government primary school Jakama in the year 1997, where it was about 50 students. I ran around talking to the villagers to send their children to school. During parents-teacher meeting, 
Awareness talks were given to the parents on the importance of education and now enrollment has gradually increased to 180 students. With the support of parents, teachers, the performance of the students improved drastically. They were sent person pass percentage in class 5 and class 8 board exams. For the last five years, the students were even placed in the top list to improve and stimulate the interest of learning in students, the entire school building and wall were painted with various picture symbols in multilingual language for the better learning and improve the, the learning in the school. And our school, Government Middle School Jakama, has been selected as the model school in the year 2019 by the school education department. I like working with children and then working with a vision to be an agent of change. I want to educate the children. And then with a policy, work is worthy. Uh, I like to work with the children and the teachers. And then working in the village is a privilege for me. I've learned lots from the grassroots level and then working and helping the poor children in the village is a blessing for me. Some of the challenges I feel in my teaching profession is lack of this technology and lack of all these things. During the last two years, we are unable to take classes and then they don't have their private phones, so we can't force them to learn. We want to call them to school, but then because of this pandemic, it is difficult for us. And then in spite of giving them assign assignment, work, they can't do it properly because they don't have this knowledge of technology in the village. So some of the challenges that I face during the last two years, these are some of the challenges that I face. I am happy that I have been selected for the National Award Teacher 2021. But then in this getting the award, I have new responsibility and obligation before me, which I should perform it with much dedication and sincerity to work for the poor and the downtrodden children in the rural areas. So whatever duty is assigned to me by the de department, I welcome that and I will work sincerely as far as my health permit me and I'll work more for the students and the community. I'm working with a vision to be an agent of change in my small little world. The Railway Protection Force, RPF, rescued 477 runaway children from railway platforms at stations on central railways across Maharashtra over the past seven months and reunited with their parents. Let's have a look at the details. The Central Railways informed that those rescued include 210 boys and 167 girls and all were reunited with their guardians with the help of non-governmental organizations like Childline and others. The statement from the Central Railways read that most of the children came to the railway stations without informing their families due to some fight or some family issues or in search of better life or glamour. They were found loitering on the platforms or near the railway stations by trained RPF personnel or sometimes in trains also. Many of the parents expressed a deep gratitude and thankfulness for this noble service of the railways, read the statement. It was informed that the children were rescued over the period of January to July 2021 from Mumbai, Bushwal, Nagpur, Pune and Solapur divisions of Central Railways. Central Railways shared an incident where a 17-year-old girl of Patna who had run away from her home to make a career in modeling and acting in Mumbai without informing anyone was rescued. In another incident, a 14-year-old girl who ran away from her home in Telangana after being scolded by her mother was rescued. That's all for the eye. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.